In part three of the build, I install hydraulic brakes, something I've never done before. Shimano sets things up out of the package to make it pretty easy. However, that is never the case for me. To stop this beast of a bike, I got the Shimano SLX 4 piston brakes. The brakes are the J-Kit version, which means the brake lever is disconnected and the brakes are pre-bled for an easy install. The frame is set up to work with a 180mm rear rotor, so I will need an adapter for the 203s I picked up for the wheels. I had difficulty finding the right adapter, but I did some research and found out that this adapter should work for the rear brake. I also purchased the SLX derailleur lever. Instead of the bar mount, the iSpec EV mount will attach directly to the brake lever. This should make for a nice clean look. The rear derailleur is the SLX M7100 and should easily manage the wide range 10 to 51 12 speed cassette. It features their latest Hyperglide Plus and Shadow RD Plus systems for smooth, quiet, and stable shifts. It looks quite slick even though it isn't the XT version. To install all these parts, we'll need hex keys, a torque set, 8mm wrench, pins to mark cuts, a housing cutter, and this little tool to install the barb into the brake housing. As a reminder, I am not a professional bike mechanic, and this is not a how-to video, but how I do a bike build video. The first thing I do is install the rear derailleur. When installing onto the hanger, make sure you properly lift the mech above the stopper on the hanger. The gap screw should adjust against the stopper. Torque down the screw and we are ready to put the cockpit together. To install the front brake, I first put on the brake lever. I want it close to where it should sit on the handlebar, so I'll use my grip to get the general proper placement. Next, I install the caliper onto the fork. The RockShox Zeb is set to work with 200mm rotors, however the Shimano rotors are 203. To make up the difference, I add these washers that are 1.5mm thick. Attach the hose to the fork, then take your measurements. <laughs> Cut the hose on the mark and install the barb. So far so good. The instructions from Shimano tell you to mark 18 millimeters back from the cut line to make sure that the hose is inserted properly. This did not work for me. I inserted the hose and it just wouldn't go in all the way. I later discovered that the olive in the brake lever was slightly damaged and it didn't slide onto the edge of the hose. I put it together to prevent any further leaking of mineral oil and later that evening I ordered a new olive and barb set from Shimano.
installing the rear brake went much smoother. Like the front brake lever, I used the grip to determine the best position. Since I have the iSpect EV shifter lever, it attaches to the brake lever via an adapter that is inserted onto the clamp. It allows you to adjust the lever up and down and left and right to get that perfect position. The carbon frame has guides for the internal cables and housing except for one aluminum part, the chain stay. I took out my handy Park Tool IR1-2 to guide the brake hose through the chain stay. This made the job pretty easy. Next I push the cable through the bottom guide and it pops out next to the head tube. The rear brake needs a 23mm adapter so I can install the 200mm rear rotor. I install the brake caliper onto the adapter and everything fit together nicely. I loosened up the banjo to point the brake housing up a little for a nice rounded curve, then attach the housing to the frame mount with the zip tie. Like the front brake, I measure the cut mark and make sure there is enough housing to twist the handlebars. This time the housing slid in perfectly and the leaking mineral oil was kept to a minimum. No problems with the olive. Next I slide in the derailleur cable housing. I didn't need any assistance on the chainstay since the opening on the end was pretty big. I led the cable through the frame without any issues. This is so much better than my old bike. 
I add some Shimano cable grease to the derailleur cable and lead it through the housing. Install the grips and I am done for the day. A couple days later the replacement olive arrived so I reinstalled the housing for the front brake lever. This time I just cut the housing added the olive to the housing, added the barb, then installed everything onto the lever. Clean it up and we are good to go. Since I don't have experience building wheels, I left that for Keith over at Landis Cyclery. Here is some footage of him assembling the DT Swiss FR560 rims to my Shimano SLX hubs. We'll release another video on the wheels so you get a chance to see how custom wheels are built. My wheels will include these Shimano SLX 203mm ice rotors. I have been using ice rotors for years and have never had a problem. The 12 speed cassette is compatible with the Microspline Free Hub and has a cog range from 51 to 10. I also purchased rim tape and a tubeless valve set from Orange Seal. The tires are my favorites, the Maxxis DHR Minion 2 and the DHF. I got them with these trendy tan sidewalls. Setting up the wheels as tubeless is not too difficult. First you tape up the rim, insert the valve, and tighten the nut. Next step is to install the tire. Max's tires sit pretty easy, however I like to remove the valve core and use the compressor to set the bead first. You will hear the tire pop when it sets correctly. The last step I do is add the orange sealant through the valve, add some air, and reinstall the valve core.
Center lock rotors are much quicker to install than six bolts. Just slide on the rotor and hand tighten down the locking nut. Use a 3 8 driver torque wrench with the Park Tool BBT 69.2 adapter and it will go on in seconds. The SLX cassette comes with a plastic adapter to make it easy to install in a single piece. It comes with a tab that aligns to the top of the microspline free hub. The cassette should just plop into place. Tighten down the cassette with the handy Park Tool FR5 cassette lock ring tool and an adjustable spanner. The last steps are to install the wheels and torque them down to manufacturer's recommendations. I like to add some grease to the axles as well as the threads. After the wheels are installed and the brake caliper is adjusted, you should do a quick brake lever bleed to get out the extra air bubbles. Well, this is all for today. In the next video, I'll be installing the chain and adjusting the rear derailleur. The bike should be rideable once the dropper post saddle and pedals are installed. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when the next video is released.